Today we're reviewing the RTX 3050. This card sat quietly on the shelf and watched as we ran tests on the RX 6500 XT and muttered horrible things under our breaths as we watched the card suffer through one test after another. And no doubt this 3050 has been wondering what its fate will be in today's review. We're going to find out. This is an RTX 3050 XC asterisk. EVGA and NVIDIA fucked up the launch, uh, but we do still have a card to review. Before that, this video is brought to you by Arctic and the Liquid Freezer 2 line of liquid coolers, which tested among the best in our thermal charts for CPU coolers. The Arctic Liquid Freezer series has had continual advancements since our original review, with updates in the mounting kit, including an AMD offset bracket for better thermals, and a longer warranty. Arctic also has its MX5 thermal compound, available on the market now, if you need some thermal paste for your regular maintenance. Learn more at the links in the description below. So just before we get into this, every EVGA RTX 3050 that was sent out for review, as we've been told by the companies, had uh, a mistake, an, an oops, where they applied a VBIOS that's intended for a card whose MSRP is $50 higher than what we thought this one would cost. So this card uh, in this state should be a $250 card MSRP. We're ignoring all the other stuff right now. That means that the clock should be much lower than what it actually was running. This card was actually running a frequency that is intended for something like an XC Ultra or some overclocked, pre-overclocked, factory overclocked XC card, where the price will be $50 higher than MSRP, so it'll be $330. Higher price, higher MSRP for basically higher clocks out of the box. Now, fortunately, EVGA and NVIDIA were kind enough to tell us about this about maybe 12 hours before we needed to start filming, which is after we had completed multiple days of testing on the device. And with the general display of competence on show here, we decided we would run with what we have and instead go off of an MSRP of $330, since that's basically what we tested. It boils down to this. EVJ offered another VBIOS. We don't have infinite time and we can't go back in time to start running tests that will literally not be possible to complete before the review goes up. The review is still valid, the data is still valid. Uh, we are, however, instead looking at a card that is above MSRP for the RTX 3050 line. The performance difference between the $250 and the $330 cards is about 2 to 3%. So this $330 version is about 2 to 3% better than the $250 version. They did send out the other VBIOS, but you know, we're just going to review it as if it's the card it actually is, which is the more expensive one. Okay, so as we get into this, we've got two test benches we're working with right now. We are transferring all of our data from our old test bench, which is a Gen 3 platform, to our new test bench, which is a Gen 4 platform with a 12700KF. That means that we're going to show multiples of each game as we go through Gen 3 and Gen 4 test bench data. Eventually, we're going to transfer all of it over to our new test bench, but because it's so long to run each card, it's an iterative process and it takes time to build the data set. So we've got the older data set that we have more cards to compare to, like GTX 1070s, 960s, 970s, uh, 980s, TIs, even things of that nature, and then the new data set where it's completely fresh but is more limited in the cards you can compare it to. Let's get started with this. We'll look at the frequency plot first, since that's where they screwed up. Uh, and just again to reiterate, this is still a thing that's going to ship. It's not like they've overclocked it to a point where it's, it's no longer a realistic card. This is a card that ships. Um, it's just not the one that they thought it was going to be. So let's get started. After we had already completed the two days of testing on the RTX 3050, EVGA and NVIDIA sent us that email we mentioned earlier, where they said they accidentally shipped a higher clocked version of the card. This plot confirms that. It is, in fact, an overperforming VBIOS for the card that it was shipped on. The good news is that this card will exist. If anything, this will reflect poorly on EVGA for its value here, since the extra 2 to 3% performance from the frequency boost costs a lot more money at a $50 increase. As you can see from the line that's been drawn, the average frequency is around 2,000 megahertz for the RTX 3050. We have another RTX card on here as well, just for a point of reference. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is up next. Tested on our older bench first, which has the 6500 XT slightly disadvantaged due to its PCIe limitations. But this was a choice AMD made, so 
The chart looks like this for 1080p. The RTX 3050 XC card, including the vBIOS bump to a higher MSRP, ran at 92 FPS average here. That has it about 7% better than a GTX 1070, which sold for around $380 when it first launched. This card is $330 MSRP, and it's coming out <laughs> six years later than the equivalently performing $380 GTX 1070. The RTX 2060 leads the 3050 by 20% here. The RX 6600 had a 119 FPS average result, leading the 3050 by 30%. There's a meaningful uplift for the 3050 versus the GTX 1060, the GTX 970, and the GTX 960, and obviously anything older than that. As for the RX 6500 XT, that remains pointless. And then for owners of a GTX 1070 or better, you obviously have no need to buy a 3050. This chart is only for the 6500 XT, really. It gains a bit here. We're on Gen 4 now, so this is the newer test bench. It closes the gap a little bit. It allows the 3050 a 30% lead instead of a 48% lead against the Gen 3 result. At 1440p on the Gen 3 bench, the RTX 3050 landed at 63 FPS average, still playable here. That has it right between the RX 5600 XT and the GTX 1070, with the RTX 2060 leading by about 18% here. The RTX 3060, currently selling for about $700 to $800 on eBay, leads the RTX 3050 by about 35%. Depending on the price gap on the street, the upgrade would push you closer to 4K performance in some lighter games or higher FPS 1440p results. Up next, in Rainbow Six Siege at 1080p, the RTX 3050 ran at about 229 FPS average. Lows are well-spaced and fine, they're roughly proportional to the average, so that looks good here too. For comparison, the RTX 2060 held at 247 FPS average, leading the RTX 3050 by 8% in average FPS. This lead is significantly smaller than what we saw in Tomb Raider and establishes a lower bound. The RTX 3050 is about 8% ahead of the GTX 1070, establishing a marker for equivalence to Pascal's generation. As for the 6500 XT, that gets left behind at 180 FPS average, but it's far behind what we're looking at up the chart. The 3050, for example, holds a 29% lead in that comparison. At 1440p, the RTX 3050 held 142 FPS average, still more than playable, leading the GTX 1660 by 20% and the GTX 1070 by 7%. The RX 6600 XT leads by about 32% when stock, for perspective against AMD. On our newer test bench, but with the same game and 1440p resolution, the RX 6600 non-XT led the 3050 by about 9.7%. This in turn led the 6500 XT Gen 4 result by 41%. Tested at 4K, the RTX 3050 ran at 70 FPS average. It's actually very close to the GTX 1070, about 7% ahead for the 3050 here. And the RX 5600 XT was also close by, and that's the one from the last generation. The RX 5600 XT was briefly a $280 card, just as a reminder, although obviously it's been a while. In Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p and on the Gen 3 bench, the RTX 3050 ran at 70 FPS average, leading the GTX 1070 by a much larger 19% margin than we saw in Rainbow Six testing. This puts the once $300 RTX 2060 KO about 12% ahead of the RTX 3050. Not great for value, but you've heard this story constantly for the last two years. Compared to AMD, the RX 6600 non-XT offers a 30% lead over the 3050, while the 6600 XT jumps 50%. For users on the RX 480 or RX 580, you can expect an improvement in the range of 27% to the RTX 3050. In the newer Gen 4 testing platform, but with the same everything, the RTX 3050 landed at about the same 71 FPS average. Perfectly playable here and it still led the 6500 XT Gen 4 result by 30%. That card already embarrassed itself enough when it equated an RX 580 though, uh, which is a refresh by the way of the 2016 RX 480, so we'll move on. Compared to the GTX 1660, the RTX 3050 offers an 18% uplift here. At 1440p, performance falls to 54 FPS average, but that's still in playable range while being on relatively high or custom high settings. You could drop settings slightly and hit 60, but 54 is realistically fine here. The lows start to struggle a little bit, and we do see some occasional blips in frame time consistency, but the experience overall is fine to good. Total War 3 Kingdoms is next, tested at 1080p. We use ultra settings for this benchmark, which is done to create extreme load on GPUs and show scaling in the future. We like to do this with at least one game per cycle to give long-term comparisons. The RTX 3050 at 49 FPS average put it close to the GTX 980 Ti and the GTX 1070 from previous generations. GTX 980 Ti owners should feel 
awfully smug right now. Alternatives would be the 3060 at 44% better in average FPS or the 6600 non-XT at 26% uplift and 62 FPS average. The 65 XT is distant and can be ignored here. At 1440p, the 30 FPS average result puts the card about the same as a GTX 1070. The RTX 3060 class cards remain in roughly playable territory, both TI and non-TI, as does the RX 6600 XT and it establishes the closest modern alternatives for a step up. You can expect 44% to about 60% better performance between the 3060 and the 6600 XT respectively, or about double the average FPS in a 3060 Ti, and thus smoother frame time consistency. In Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p, we measured an 82 FPS average, with lows still overall fine. The stack is similar to before. The 2060 is about a 17% lead, the 6600 is about 21% ahead of the 3050, and the RTX 3060 and RX 6600 XT are both about 38% ahead. The 3050 leads the 6500 XT on Gen 3 by 34%. The 1660 Super is about the same as the 3050. And that's formerly a $230 card, by the way, but to be fair, it had no RTX capabilities and it's not $230 now. The Gen 4 result helps the 6500 XT a bit, bringing it up to 70 FPS average from around 60 FPS average on Gen 3. This has it closer to the 3050, but the 3050 still leads significantly. In the Division 2 at 1080p, the RTX 3050 held at 104 FPS average, showing a reduced distance from the 2060 and 6600 than in some of the other tests. The 2060 is 14% ahead, the 6600 non-XT is 25% ahead, and the 3050 leads the 1660 Super by 13%. The RTX 3050 is right between the 1660 Super and the RTX 2060 KO. At 1440p, the 3050 held 68 FPS average and had consistent frame time pacing. That's fully playable without any real issues. The 3050 ends up a bit ahead of the GTX 1070 and spaced apart from the 2060 and up by the same percentages as before, or roughly. Far Cry 6 is next. For this one, we only test with our Gen 4 platform right now. We don't use extra texture packs in testing and just test the stock game on high settings. The RTX 3050 landed at 88 FPS average, which means the 2060 is about 13% ahead, and that's on the lower side of the average thus far. The 3050 is ahead of the 6500 XT Gen 4 by 16% here. At 1440p, the 3050 drops 26% of its performance from 1080p, expectedly, but maintains an overall playable average. Frame times aren't as good, but they are at least mostly consistent the hierarchical stack remains about the same. In GTA 5 on the Gen 3 bench, the RTX 3050 ran at 109 FPS average with our settings, making it about the same in average 1% and 0.1% lows as the 1660 Super. The RTX 2060 still holds a 17% lead over the 3050 in this one. For power consumption testing at the PCIe cables and the PCIe slot, we saw the 3050 at about 134 watts stock. That's including EVGA's boosted vBIOS, or 149 watts when overclocked. On the stock side, that has it consuming about the same power as the 6600 Swift, or Swift, or whatever the missing vowel is. So that's it then. We're getting a little worn down here, but you get the idea for our conclusions, which is that uh, the value is obviously still going in a negative direction. That's not good. The RTX 2060 KO puts this thing to shame in disgusting ways. Uh, it, it shouldn't even be allowed on YouTube at how much this gets disgraced by the 2060, where it's 8 to 30% better than the 3050 is in rasterization results. And yet, at the same time, the 2060 KO is a card that we bought for $300 when it came out. And this is $330. So you know where we stand on this. Wrapping it all up then, uh, certainly our opinion of the ability to handle a launch hasn't improved. But beyond that, what we know is that the retail versions are supposed to have the correct to be BIOS is installed. So if you buy the XC Black, it's going to be the stock frequency one. And the XC Ultra, or whatever it's ultimately called, will be basically what we reviewed here today, but the performance difference doesn't matter a ton. Called percentage points. So where do we end up? We end up with uh, 2060 is anywhere from about 7% to 30% ahead of the 3050. It depends on the game and the resolution, but that's the very wide range we saw. If we narrow that down to more of an average, in aggregate, the 2060 tends to be closer to about 13 to 16% ahead of the 3050 in our testing and the low metric scale mostly linearly between the two, so it's proportional. 
So that's about the difference there. That's with the 2060 KO, which was once a $300 card, obviously not anymore, but that's what it was. The 1660 Super is similar in performance to the RTX 3050, plus or minus a bit, depending on the game, but they're mostly comparable directly. And the 6500 XT is left behind, as one might expect, from a card which has had half of its features cut off. The GTX 1070 is shockingly close in performance in the test we ran versus the 3050. So, uh, and the 980 Ti as well is pretty close. So as we said, if you're a 980 Ti owner, you should be pretty smug right now because you're still doing pretty well since your card, which was something like 500, maybe $600 when you bought it, uh, not even adjusting for inflation, is, is now about the same as a card that's gonna retail for close to 400 many years later, like like five, six, five, six years later, something like that. Um, and certainly this will be even more expensive in the street. So that's where it lines up. Hopefully that's enough to help you figure out if you actually wanna buy it or not. It's, it's still hard to review some of these cards right now. Sometimes they make it easy. The 6500 XT certainly made it easy because it drew a very clear line in the sand of just how little it was willing to give for basic features for users who are buying it. This one, we have the same stance we do as all the other ones. It's just you start getting beaten down over time, which the stance is the value is obviously going in a negative direction. It's a regression from the past few years in value. We've been saying this for a couple of years now. Uh, this does appear to be the status quo at this point. So maybe the upside would be to look at it as, but is it going in a negative direction at a slower pace? Has, has the acceleration slowed on the regression in value? And maybe it depends what it sells for. I don't know. I, it's hard to review a product based on information that will not exist until after it actually launches and ends up on eBay's digital shelves. So look, we're gonna be straight up with you. Uh, these GPU launches right now, we're still gonna review the cards, we're gonna test them, and our goal is mostly if it's really stupid, like the 6500 XT was, like the new GT 730s are, we'll tell you. If it's kind of nebulous or it's in the middle or whatever, uh, then we'll give you the percent differences versus other cards so that you can make an informed decision still. You still get value out of the review and the data, but also we're going to shift and we have been shifting our focus to other components that we're more interested in because the GPU market's been just burning everyone. And, and it's clear that you know, we have very limited time with the small staff we have and the depth we provide. And so we've been looking at the situation now as you know, this is the time to start investing in fan testing and really figure that out. We've been putting off fan testing, open loop testing, uh, expanding our acoustic testing to include frequency spectrum analysis. We've been putting that off for years now because we've done such depth on GPUs in the past where we'd wire them all up with thermocouples, but we would do uh, Schlieren imaging testing and all this other cool stuff pressure map testing, cold plate flatness testing. Our 3080 GPU review was insane. It was one of the most in-depth reviews I've ever produced for GN. Um, but it's clear that right now the market is still in a weird position where it's kind of to some extent to a, to a limit, which apparently is the 65 XT because that remained in stock for a while. To a limit, people will buy something if it's kind of good enough uh, because your options have been limited. And what that says to us is this is a good time to invest our efforts into other cool stuff that you all will appreciate, you all have been asking us for for years, and now's the time to capitalize on that and use the, the reduced interest in things like reviews for this that include pressure maps and flatness testing and Schlieren imaging where people don't care anymore or don't care to the same extent because the comparative between cards doesn't matter if you're just buying what's available to you. Uh, and invest that into something productive, which is all the other components we want to get into. So just trying to be fully upfront with everyone that uh, we've given you the percent differences, you know where it lands, but we can also read the room and we see a lot of interest in other components. So uh, we're exploring more of that, excited to do it. Anyway, this thing is kind of, you know, like I said, eight to 30% advantaged uh, 2060 versus this. 
Um, average 13 to 16 percent. The 1660 is super similar to 65 XT is behind. 1070 is very close. That's about it for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for the other stuff like our Fantaster. We posted some YouTube stories recently showing it. We've got it set up and we're running it now. Really excited about that. Happy to share it. Check back for that. Go to store.gamersaccess.net to grab something like a toolkit and we'll see you all next time.